Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to be starting out with the RX 9050 series of graphics cards. As there are rumors that AMD are planning for ultra budget focused RDNA 4 based graphics cards. And then we're going to move swiftly into some updates to the specifications of Zen 6, specifically focusing on the desktop, but also throwing in some server stuff as well. And then we're going to finish with the GPU formerly known as the Titan, as we actually have a pretty comprehensive list of the specifications that seemingly have leaked online and we're going to get into all of that plus some more stuff after this quick message from the sponsor of the video if you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with the RX 9050 series of graphics cards. Now, it's actually worth noting that unlike the 9060 and 9060 XT, evidence for the 9050 has been pretty sparse. All the watts just prior to CES did actually write a tweet and mention about the existence of these GPUs, but at this point we have absolutely no idea to A, the specifications of the GPUs and also watch die it's going to be using. N48, of course, powers the 9070 and 9070 XT. The rumors seem to indicate that the 9060 series will be powered by N44, although, again, there's no exact confirmation of that. And the 9050, well, that's where things become more interesting. But there is a Mexican retailer, DD Tech, and this was spotted by a user on Twitter, that seems to be indicating that the 9050 series of graphics cards will actually eventually make its way to the market. Now, quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the case. While AMD are moving, of course, towards APUs, not least of which for laptops, that isn't to say that there are some discrete GPU usage cases that would still be floating around, especially if you have like an older CPU. GPU, or perhaps you just need a GPU for doing things like encoding or whatever else. So I wouldn't be surprised if AMD did this and they could maybe release the graphics card at let's say 200 bucks or even cheaper depending on what the specifications of the card would actually end up being. And of course we've also seen Nvidia uh, seemingly are working on the RTX uh, 5050 series, about to say the 9050 series, my brain is doing two things at once and that's apparently difficult today, um, and the 5050 series is allegedly only going to be featuring 8 gigabytes of memory and unlike, let's say, the 5060 Ti or something like that, it's actually seemingly only going to be using GDDR6 memory. I don't really think that that's going to be too much of a problem. Depending on the rest of the specifications of the card, it's not like um, this GPU is probably going to be too bandwidth hungry, although, of course, again, it does depend on things like the L2 cache and other uh, elements of the GPU, but uh, 8 gigabytes for a 5050, I don't think it's terrible. Again, more VRAM equal good, generally speaking, but... I don't think people have this expectation of like 4K ray tracing with all of the settings cranked up anyway. It's probably going to be more of an eSports card or a budget 1080p GPU. But again, like with any product, it's not necessarily the product equal bad. It's dependent on the pricing. And unfortunately, prices for GPUs have been, <laughs> well... <laughs> Let's just say not too great. And now we're going to move on to AMD, specifically Zen 6. Now, I'm going to focus most of this video on the Medusa configuration, which is going to be for client, which is basically desktop as well as the laptop situation. And I'll probably do like an update to this in the next several days or so when I can get more information, um, uh, reaching out to some sources. But just because A, it's the weekend and different time zones, it kind of means that people are responding at different, well, times. Times. But anyway, um, there is a post that originated on Chip Hell. I'm going to give courtesy credit to WCCF Tech where I initially spotted this. And the well known leaker on Chip Hell, Zhang Zhong Hao, 
uh, basically is writing 12, 32, 12 and 24 is 96 megabytes, you know what I mean. And then another user, L3 Lolita Control. I don't really know what to do with that username, maybe it's just a bad translation, I don't know. Anyway, 12 core Zen 6 CCD is 48 megabytes, L3, 32 Zen 6 CCD is 128, desktop non-X3D is 48 megabytes times 2, that's 96 megabytes of L3. So that may be a little confusing to you, so there's a few things. First of all, uh, there was also some confusion whether we would see Zen 6, just because of how the CCD and the IOD and other things are going to be changing for Zen 6, uh, whether there's going to be an X3D variant. And basically, to my understanding, the answer is yes. AMD are not going to be dropping that. I always found it a little weird as a concept that AMD would just go, whoop, out of the window since it's essentially been a money, a money printing machine. But uh, yeah, basically, um, it seems that yes, there will be X3D variants for Medusa, which of course will end up being the Ryzen series. What do you guys think it's going to be called? Ryzen 10,000? Do you think it's going to have some other name? For example, the 11950 or whatever else? Let me know in the comments what you think AMD are going to be calling these things. But uh, also, I reached out to a couple of sources, and this is what I've gotten back so far. So the standard Zen 6 server CCD is likely to have 2 times 12 Zen 6 CCXs. The client, meanwhile, is going to have a 12-core single Zen 6 CCX. So basically, this means that in the client, the maximum um, highest-end SKU is going to have 24 cores, so it's going to have two of those CCXs basically bundled up next to one another. Zen 6 is also, sorry, Zen 6C, I'll repeat that, Zen 6C will have the same 4 megabyte L3 cache as Zen 6, so basically there's a parity there, so that's a 32-core mesh, now has 128 megabytes of L3 cache total, L2 is not stacked. L3 is going to be on the base die, and cores plus L2 will be on the stacked CCD. As for the server, we're looking at 192 core for the highest and regular variants, and um, 256 for the 32C variant. So, uh, just a quick update. Um, to my understanding, the L2 cache size for uh, Zen 6 is going to remain the same as Zen 5, but again, I'll try to find out a little bit more information about this. I've already put out a previous video giving some updates to Zen 6, maybe a week or two ago, but long story short, yes, the desktop does seem to be raising the core counts to 24 cores, uh, 48 threads total. One of the whole reasons AMD are going to be doing this is to help face off against the next generation of Intel processors, which allegedly are just going to be going absolutely balls to the walls when it comes to the core counts. Of course, whether these products actually end up in the light of day, particularly on the Intel side of things, since things are just so volatile over at Intel at the moment, We'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, in my previous video, I was also discussing things like the um, clock frequency, the process node, and other bits and bobs. One thing I think I may have gotten wrong on the previous video is I mentioned that L2 cache may actually be a stacked uh, separate die, but this does not seem to be the case. Basically, I think there was a little bit of a mix-up between me and the source, and maybe also some problems with one of my sources not speaking such great English, uh, which obviously at the end of the day, that's my pro that's my fault. I should have double checked, but uh, it seems that the CCD and the L2 cache are basically, uh, yes, together. And uh, well, basically they're a separate stack die and the L3 cache essentially is going to be a separate one. So it it's going to be a very interesting chip i suspect that zen 6 is going to be a pretty big jump not just in terms of ipc and you know maximum clock frequency and all that stuff but there are some pretty big changes across the die i think there's going to be some very interesting improvements in multi-threading at the end of the day it's still quite a while before these processes actually see the light of day we're looking of course at uh the latter part of next year most likely that at the end of the day we have quite a while before these processes come to the marketplace so it's not like we have anywhere near final you know benchmarks or anything like that but i'm going to be very interested to see how these turn up 
Uh, obviously, Zen 5, uh, the 9950X3D is shaping up to be extremely good with like a 5.7 gigahertz uh, single core boost, which is pro probably going to be absolutely phenomenal. But I think if you do want to jump into AM5 right now, you're in a pretty good place with the 9800X3D being absolutely solid for gaming, and even the non-vanilla. So even the vanilla parts are pretty solid for most users as well. Now I want to jump onto the GPU formerly known as the Titan. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I did actually leak the fact that I had been hearing that NVIDIA were working on a Titan variant, which may actually have up to 96 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, in the original video, I mentioned about all of this, and I spoke about it at quite at length. I said that yes is probably more SM and stuff, but I was hearing that there were two different configurations. And now we actually have some updates to this. I wanna give credit to Harikazi on Twitter for actually spotting this, but basically speaking, we have just a smidgen over 24,000 CUDA cores, 752 tensor cores, 188 ray tracing cores, 96 gigabytes of memory with error correction and a 600 watt TDP. And this has been spotted also by Mark Brown. And basically these images are from Lead Tech and basically they started to do some analysis under the source code of the website. And uh, the, the, the price so far on dial, sorry, on direct dial is just a shade under 12,000 US dollars. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, I'm sure some folks will be buying these cards for gaming because, well, of course they will, but I would suspect that you're not really going to get any additional performance over something like an RTX 5090. At the end of the day, a GPU such as this is going to be used for, well, professional workloads, so of course, high-end video production, AI, that type of thing. Um, my only slight negative is that I would imagine, given <laughs> just the profitability, I wonder how many of these dies are going to end up in one of these versus a 5090. And obviously the 5090 shortages, they're still being an absolute pain in the ass, unfortunately. Um, I'm curious, actually, let me know in the comments, um, because I, some folks, especially for the RX 9000 series launch, told me that for both the RX 9000 and also for certain NVIDIA RTX 50 cards, availability has actually been really quite decent if you want to get a pre-built. So, for example, if you're trying to buy, let's just hypothetically say a 5090, if you want to buy one solo, it's essentially like you might as well just try to walk down the street and pick up like a hundred dollar bill. You're going to actually have better luck. On the other hand, if you want to go with, you know, whatever system integrator and pick up one that has a 5090, you actually have better luck. So in some cases, folks are actually just decide, you know what, I'm just going to buy a pre-built for whatever reason. And even if you've got a decent system, and so you don't necessarily need the uh, the CPU or what have you. They'll just end up selling the rest of the system and keeping the GPU. So I'm curious to hear what some of you guys have found because obviously different uh, regions have different availability. And well, living in the UK sometimes kind of sucks ass. With that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. I will be very much excited to see what AMD brings to the market with the next generation of Ryzen, but Zen 5 at this point is looking very nice indeed. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.